It terrorized the night, not by strength, but by cunning. It was the smartest dinosaur that ever lived. This spark of intelligence was snuffed out 65 million years ago. But had it continued to bloom, this remarkable creature might have inherited the Earth. mark the site of the Lance Formation in eastern Wyoming, one of the most fertile dinosaur fields on Earth. For over a century, fossil hunters have found treasure here. The colossal bones of duck-billed dinosaurs and the infamous Tyrannosaurus rex. In 1993, Paleontologist Craig Durstler of the University of New Orleans began exploring an area of rugged gullies and deep gulches he would name Dragon's Grave. The site has lived up to its name. The dinosaurs in this formation are, are just very abundant compared to most places. Uh, the dinosaurs, of course, all date from the very latest part of the Cretaceous, and the top of the Lance Formation corresponds to the extinction of dinosaurs. So, of course, if you go above that, there are no dinosaurs left. The sandstone in Dragon's Grave was laid down 67 million years ago, just two million years before the dinosaurs went extinct. Durstler and his team are reconstructing the final moments of this great dynasty. The presence of hadrosaur, or duckbill bones, came as no surprise. But then, the tiny fossils of an extremely rare dinosaur came to light. The discovery captured the attention of paleontologist Dale Russell at North Carolina State University. A specialist in dinosaur intelligence, Russell has tracked an elusive prey for nearly three decades. Dragon's Grave would provide happy hunting grounds. Look at that, there's a vertebrae coming out of the ground there. My gosh. Is that all you get is hadrosaur? Go after our antlers and hadrosaur. Not at all, not at all. It's one of the oh. things I wanted to show you oh, yeah. was uh, some of the other special stuff we've been oh, getting. Hey. It's 99% hadrosaur, but yeah. the other stuff, the 1%, is great. Okay, here's the sorts of things that are in that 1%. Look at that, you see that? Ooh, wow. Boy, that's definitely juvenile. Definitely troodon. Okay. That's all nice. Right. Troodon a fossil hunter's prize. Durstler's collection of tiny troodon juveniles, including fragments of their eggshells, and minute baby teeth is an exceptional find. In 1856, the fossilized teeth of a small dinosaur were discovered in Montana. The species was aptly named troodon, which means wounding teeth. Few related fossils were ever found, and for more than a century, Troodon sparked little interest among dinosaur experts. All that would change when Dale Russell came upon the skull cap of a Troodon in a museum collection. The more he studied the fossil, the more it amazed him. I sat and I turned that skull back and forward in my hands for probably five minutes. And then I started, my heartbeat started going up. And I realized that I was seeing something that nobody would noticed before. Most dinosaurs' brains did not fill their brain cavities. But the Troodon brain was so large, it left impressions on the inside of the skull.
Troodon was every inch the predator, with razor-sharp serrated teeth and large hook-like claws. Unique among the dinosaurs, Troodon had an opposable finger that gave it a firm grasp on its prey. Troodon belonged to a family of dinosaurs called the theropods, all bipedal predators like Tyrannosaurus rex. But with a skull just seven inches long, Troodon would have been dwarfed by its giant cousin. Consider their vital statistics. Troodon, five feet tall, under 100 pounds. Tyrannosaurus rex, nearly 40 feet tall, over six tons. They are so interesting because they are so highly evolved, so uncommon, so difficult to find, and so anatomically interesting. This dinosaur may be small, but its significance is very large. No longer an evolutionary footnote, Troodon may rewrite the book on dinosaur intelligence. What Dale Russell discovered etched in an ancient skull cap would challenge conventional wisdom. It was long assumed that all dinosaurs were slow-witted. The logic was simple. Huge body, tiny brain. Case in point, a three-ton monster like Stegosaurus had a brain that weighed about two ounces. Troodon was about 40 times smaller than Stegosaurus, yet its brain actually weighed more. In fact, when compared to its body size, Troodon's brain was about six times larger than that of most dinosaurs. When the ratio of brain to body size is plotted on a curve, it shows a steady rise that begins with primitive life forms and culminates with human beings. Troodon placed higher on the curve than any other dinosaur. It also outranked the early mammals, our own ancestors. So much for the notion that dinosaur brains had reached an evolutionary dead end. It was the first time that we realized that some dinosaurs had brains that were unusually large for reptiles and that these creatures, the dinosaurs, were not a static group. They were evolving and they were evolving towards higher levels of behavioral complexity. Dale Russell also detected one other feature on the inner surface of the Troodon skull. The brain that left its mark there showed the beginnings of folding. The more complex a brain, the more folded its surface, as epitomized in human beings. The complexity of Troodon's brain was approaching that of some modern birds and mammals. What did a small predator do with all that brain power? It processed information from its highly developed senses, especially vision. With eyes that faced forward, Troodon had more refined depth perception than other dinosaurs. The ability to see in three dimensions was critical when leaping at fast-moving prey, like small mammals. Troodon's eyes were also very large, an indication it was probably a creature of the night. Seventy million years ago, Troodon was perhaps better equipped than any other dinosaur to stalk the dark. With its keen senses and small stature, it could have crept into places thick with underbrush, where giant killers like T-Rex could hardly venture. Here, small prey scurried, and Troodon was king. Bone by bone, bit by bit, 
Craig Durstler and his team are reconstructing the life and times of some of the last dinosaurs to walk the earth. For Dale Russell, Dragon's Grave provides the first detailed information on Troodon's habitat, its food resources, and the other creatures who shared this environment. Today, excavations are focused on a bone bed filled primarily with the remains of hadrosaurs, huge duck-billed dinosaurs. The species that thrived here at Dragon's Grave was Edmontosaurus, a plant eater. It stood 20 feet high and weighed three or more tons. Back then, Dragon's Grave was a river delta teeming with life. Herds of Edmontosaurus grazed the vegetation that grew near water's edge. Occasionally, a monstrous T-Rex would crash through the swamps and kill one of the large duckbills. Others succumbed to old age or disease. As they died, Edmontosaurus were washed into the water. In time, their bones became part of the natural levees that formed throughout the delta. A living example of this environment is the swampy ecosystem of Louisiana, Craig Durstler's home state. The natural levee deposit that you can see immediately behind me is the kind of environment where the duckbill bones were accumulating. All you have to do is take this sediment, the bones which would have been incorporated inside, the plant debris, which is very obviously growing and accumulating in this area, and put the duckbills into it as well, put the troodons in, and voila. The environment is virtually identical to what it was like 65, 66 million years ago when troodon was roaming, living, taking care of its young in Wyoming. Durstler sees Troodon as the dinosaur equivalent of a cunning present-day predator in the Louisiana Bayou. If you look for an analogy in terms of not just what they ate, but in terms of their functional abilities, in terms of their intelligence and so on, the best analog that we can find are coyotes. And that's one reason why Troodons are sometimes referred to as coyote dinosaurs. They're cunning, they're quick, they solve problems rapidly, they modify their behavior at, a, at the drop of a hat. It seems reasonable to push that for troodonts as well, because in this environment, in this, in this late Cretaceous southern Louisiana here, that we have here in Wyoming, you have troodonts as small, nimble, and the most intelligent creatures in the area. Like a two-legged coyote, troodon flourished in the rich environment that was Dragon's Grave. The natural levee that the troodonts apparently were living on when they got incorporated into the bone bed uh, was certainly one of those supermarket or grocery store environments with all the plants, with all the insects that were there, certainly all the small animals that were available, certainly the duckbill or possibly the duckbill carcasses as well. Uh, it was just a great place to live. It was a great place certainly to raise young as well. Because of the, because of the uh, slate elevation on the natural levees, it was also a great place to, uh, for mothers to watch out for danger when they were taking care of the young. Troodon mothers may have laid their eggs near the banks of the levee, where the carcasses of duckbills piled up. In this way, Troodon young would have hatched to a ready source of food. The adult Troodon probably fed on a variety of fare, plants, insects, and our ancestors, the early mammals. During the Cretaceous period, mammals were small insect eaters whose sole refuge was the night. Most large killer dinosaurs had poor night vision. Then, Troodon arrived on the scene. Little escaped its acute eyesight, its nimble, grasping hands. The mammals had nowhere to hide. Master of the dark, Troodon may have posed a greater threat to mammals than any other predator on Earth. The coyote.
coyote dinosaur might eventually have slowed the evolution of mammals to a dead stop. We will never know, for Troodon was suddenly cut down in its prime. This dinosaurian community, in its, really in its flush of youth, was also a final expression of the beauty of the dinosaurian world, because just after the moment in time represented by this locality, a great extinction swept the surface of the Earth. Scientists have yet to solve the mystery of the dinosaurs' demise. Asteroids, volcanoes, or viruses may be to blame. Only the outcome is clear. By 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs were gone. But the story of Troodon does not end here at Dragon's Grave. It launches us into the future, from the dinosaur age to the space age. The extinction of the dinosaurs ushered in a new era in Earth history, the age of the mammals. The descendants of Troodon's tiny prey now rule the planet. But was the rise of our kind predestined? Or could the evolution of life have taken a different course? What would have happened if the mass extinction hadn't occurred? Uh, mammals had been suppressed or, or limited to the small body size all through the Mesozoic. Now we have these small theropods moving in, um, certainly competing with mammals, certainly or almost certainly preying on the mammals that, that were comfortable for a period of time. If the extinction hadn't occurred, um, you can project this one step farther. Perhaps, perhaps these small theropods would have completely pushed the small mammals aside. Um, at the very least, they would have kept them from ever getting large. Natural selection had favored Troodon's acute vision, its grasping hands, and keen intelligence. What if it had continued evolving? Dale Russell would answer that question by projecting Troodon into a hypothetical future where dinosaurs had never gone extinct. He was prompted by a group of scientists interested in the evolution of life, but not on Earth. Experts at NASA were looking into a research project based on a bold proposition that life might exist elsewhere in the universe. They asked Russell to calculate the odds that it might be intelligent. Russell reviewed brain-to-body ratios as they evolved through time. Before the extinction of the dinosaurs, mammals and Troodon had similar body-brain proportions. In theory, both had equal chances of becoming more highly evolved. 65 million years ago, Troodon was full of potential. Given another eon or two, it might have looked like this. The dinosauroid, a hypothetical creature, humanoid in form, reptilian in biology. like ours, skin like a snake's, brain like ours, eyes of a dinosaur. A dinosauroid mother would have given live birth, as do some species of snakes and lizards today. But with no mammary glands, she would have regurgitated solid food for her baby. Russell created the dinosauroid by calculating how Troodon's skeleton would have changed if its brain had grown to the relative size of our own. The 
eyes are focused more directly toward the front than they are in the dinosaur, so it probably would have had stereoscopic vision, as, as we happen to. The face is shortened. It has hands which it uses as tools and feeding devices rather than a jaw. The backbone is vertical. The pelvis is rotated beneath it. And it is our feeling, especially in view of the tremendous success of our own species and the bioengineering that it represents, which is the wisdom of millions of years, derived from a creature, incidentally, which is like a shrew and four-legged. Um, we feel that this is a expectable, viable body form in our thought experiment. And it, it's actually a creature that departed from an ancestor which was bipedal, had an a hand that was, had an opposable finger in it, had partly stereoscopic vision, and indeed the dinosaur looks more like us than our own ancestors did. Had the dinosaurs survived, a creature like this might have built great cities, created works of art, and gazed at the stars questioning the meaning of it all. A spark of what we define as human consciousness may have smoldered in a small dinosaur 70 million years ago. The fate of Troodon carries a message for our kind. But for a fluke of evolution, we might not be here. scientists with emerald skin would study the bones of ancient mammals, wondering what they might have become.